Hello and welcome to Train Some TV. It's actually currently Christmas Day, so um, happy Christmas, even though when this video goes out it will be Boxing Day. But um, I, I felt the need that um, now all is quiet in the household of Train Some TV, um, I thought it would be rude not to go and have a look at what um, has, has actually come out and been released today. This is actually freeware. Um, this is from Backdated Train Sim. And it only came to light literally two days ago, so I think it was the 23rd, um, a teaser was posted on the Facebook page of a locomotive. It was a bit distorted on the video, you couldn't really see what it was, but the noise sort of give it away, um, being uh, Aurora Class 85. Um, and lo and behold, I think the day after, um, it was Christmas Eve obviously, um, a, a picture was shown of it, and it, it, it was that, so... Just looking at it is is brilliant. Um, there's a couple of niggles, there's a couple of little issues, but it's freeware at the end of the day, and you don't always get freeware to the quality of how this looks. Um, it, it fills a huge gap. Um, it comes with a nice scenario as well, which we're going to do for the video, and that's on West Coast Main and Trent Valley. Um, and we're just going to go and take a drive and have a play with it. Um, again. It's a big gap filler. Um, it's something that we've not seen in TS. Uh, am I telling a lie here? What have we seen? We saw something on a uh, IHH many, many years ago. But I can't remember what class that was. I'm not sure if it was an 85 or something else. I know it was one of the older AL um, electric locos, but I can't quite remember what that was. But anyway, we have got a class 85 now in the sim. Totally free. So um, we're going to unpause this. We're going to take it for a drive. We'll do we'll do the scenario. It's only it's forty five minutes. So let's get straight into this before I start waffling on. So uh, drive class eighty five on a semi fast service from Rugby to Stafford, calling additionally at Nuneaton. So Rugby, Nuneaton, and Stafford is what we're doing. Let's get the doors open. But yeah, just, just looking at it, it's absolutely superb. Delivery works lovely, really nice. So much detail in the windows, and that you can actually see um, all the electrical stuff. That's not just a texture on the window, it's actually sort of, if you go inside there, it's actually been done in such a way that you can uh, see inside. I'm not sure if that's the, is that the boiler. Do they have boilers in these? I'm not really sure, to be perfectly honest. I don't know a lot of them, about them, or anything like that. Uh, I just know it's something that we've needed in TS for a long time. So. It'll fill a good gap in that uh, older era scene. And I look forward to seeing the scenarios that come along in time for this. One thing I'll touch on um, before we get going is... Um, one of the things that I, I've seen on comments, but when you look at it... I think there may be slight, it might slightly be off on the front. I'm not sure of it. I think the slope should be a little bit more pronounced on, on, the, on the front end of the nose. Um... Whether that's been done in such a way because it's based off maybe the West Coast Mainline North 86 stuff. I'm not overly sure if it's been built around that or it's been built from scratch. We'll go through the manual and figure all this out anyway. But um, whether because the cabs come from that, it's been done in such a way to work around that cab model. I'm not overly sure, but we'll, we'll, we'll find out. Right. Let's get into the cab. So this is the West Coast North 86 cab. Uh, and there's reasons as to why it's... It, use this and we'll go through all that. Now hopefully you can hear me over that. I'm just going to tweak some audio just so you can hear me over the top of um, the motors there. Hopefully you can hear me better now. Them wheels are interesting as well. I've just noticed that when in the motion of the wheels, some really cool detail going on. Like they've got um, bolts or something in there that's quite interesting. Bogey details, lovely. So, yeah, I, I'm, I, I don't know what's if it's all freshly built. I don't know if there's anything recycled. We need to go through the manual and find this stuff out. 
but already, just looking at it, I'm, I'm impressed. Absolutely superb. Can't thank Backdated Trinity enough for releasing this free. They didn't have to do it for free. They could have easily uh, made this pay where. I think to look at it, it I would, I'd happily pay for that. Already by looking at that. And just looking at that roof detail. It's brilliant. The horn's a bit annoying though because you've got to sort of like hold space down and time it before you press B. I presume it's because it uses the older um, sound as such. There is reasons in the manual as to why um, the APEP stuff hasn't been used. Uh, again, we'll go through that in a little while. I'm just going to take off and uh, have a nice little drive. It's, it's weird not pressing U to tap. <laughs> There is a neutral section coming up in a moment as well. don't quite think it works with neutral sections it hasn't powered off or anything but we'll we'll, we'll drive properly I've got a good feeling this is going to bring some really, really interesting scenarios. I mean, obviously they're used on passenger stuff, but they're also used for freight. So I can see some interesting um, enterprise work and uh, stuff coming along and other things that they did. I think they worked on sort of like steel flow and stuff as well, and tank work. Typical when you want to do one of them sort of views, it's <laughs> under a bridge. That's really cool. Really, really am impressed. It's been quite a good year for all the sort of, uh, well, the electrical loco side of things. Obviously, we had the 87 a few months ago from AP. Um, I think about a year or so before we had the 86 EP. But, um, this side of things is looking very good for what we have. Better see some other early electrical loco stuff. Just putting the hints out there, but you never know. <laughs> the thing is, as well. But the quality of how this thing looks, it sits in perfectly and it looks really, really well along with the 86 EP and the 87 pack from Wagons. Um, it, it just blends in really, really well. Some of the sounds probably could do a bit of toning down, maybe a little bit too intrusive, like that Ada Press. But then again, I could be wrong, it's just how it sort of feels to myself. Again, these are just. This is literally my first look here. I've, I've not driven this or anything. I've literally just downloaded it, put it on, turned it on, loaded it up, and straight in here. So what you're seeing at the same time as what I'm seeing. So um, I could be talking absolute cobblers. I could be sort of on point. We'll see. I'm only speeding, but never mind. I'm not paying attention to that. I'm back up to 125, so I'm not going to bother to, to slow down for that. Which is bad practice, but um, what are you going to do? <laughs> well, I'll just nip out here. 
what we've got here. Is that another rated stairs? It's another rated five. So we could potentially get a really nice screenshot. I want to get a good screenshot of this. This is already going to, I think, be the screenshot. If I can time it just right, just to get what I want. I'm already on the hunt. That just looks so good. And I do apologise that my Steam overlay has decided to intrude. Right, let's get some pause and continue. But yeah, look, just look at that. Absolutely superb. The long goal rake as well. Interesting era. Really. Get some nitty gritty stuff here. Well, we've seen some loco uh, freighting. Some loco hull stuff maybe as well there. So I think last year back data train sim released um potentially could have been the Birkenhead tramway. I'm not overly sure if that's right. I know there was definitely a, a tram of some form or tram sort of thing. It might have been the year before where they did the uh, I think it was the Glasgow tram. They did something to do with the Glasgow stuff as well. Maybe the Birkenhead. Was it the Birkenhead tram? The Birkenhead tramway route, I think, yeah, just been the last year's one. It's sort of the, the cool the cool thing is that these days that back data train some tries to do something around the Christmas um sort of a little Christmas release present. I love it. It's brilliant. This truly was a, a, a present to behold. Really, really nice. We're seven miles from Nuneaton. Um When we actually pull up there, I'll pick a couple of things out that I've seen and, um, just before I actually start the video. I did have a quick skim around visually before um, unpausing to do the video. Um, I just want to point those out because hopefully there may be little things that could be fixed. Nothing major or anything like that, just a couple of uh, little minor little, uh, visual things. And then uh, as we as we progress on, we'll go through the manual, we'll go through some background history, what's needed and what what sort of the requirements you need as, as well, like the scenario and that. I wasn't expecting the scenario, I saw obviously when the post came that it was obviously the local, I wasn't actually expecting a scenario to come as well, which is really cool. Yeah, at least you can win it out of the box until some uh, community scenarios come along. Obviously, whilst it's subject of Christmas, we at Train Some TV hope you've had a fantastic day. Um, whatever you, whatever you've been doing, um, of course, um, pop in the comments below what you've been up to, what you got, and all that. Why not? Pop your thoughts in on the uh, about the pack. Packs link. Everything is in the description as well. So if you want to download this, just look in our description of the video. And you'll find that there. One thing I will say, I feel like these are definitely actually new sounds in some form or way. Maybe some bits have been reused, but I feel like that um, the motor noises are actually new. I don't recall the West Coast Line over, uh, no, sorry, West Coast Line North. I think it's sounding like that. I could be wrong. It's been that long since I've actually used it. Um, I, I just don't recall it ever sounding like that, so maybe these are new sounds. For the motors, anyway. But the, the 85 uh, sound different. That's that roar. It's really known for the roars. sideline as well interesting time for trains and classic if you'd have seen on um, the Facebook page recently that DDG have um, posted a very interesting blog um, about updates coming to the core of the actual sim itself um, a very promising future for the sim uh, I look forward to seeing what that beholds and what comes with it um, in, the, in the future 
it does sound very, very promising. And it's what the sim needs. It's a shame it's taken 15 years to get to this point, but at least we're getting there. Uh, and it's nice to see that, that, the, that the management are seeing that TS has a life still, after all this time. Uh, TS must be bringing DTG still a good number in sales, so for them to see that there's potential in the sim to develop it further after all this time is, is very, very good, very promising. How many games that are 15 years old do you see that get further core development like that? It can't be many at all, really. So yeah, exciting times ahead. Uh, not far from Neat now, only two miles, so we're going to power off because we've got a new section coming. So we'll let that uh, knock itself down. And then uh, we will get ourselves into Nuneaton and we'll have a look around. <coughs> Recognize that brake release sound. I think that's definitely been reused. <clears throat> it's not a bad thing. It does the job. Trying to get to grips and get the feel of how the brakes perform. Obviously, we're not driven this yet, so we need to make sure we know how it performs and the physics side of things. But it doesn't seem like it's overly uh, powered or anything like that in terms of like bad physics or anything. It seems to be pretty decent, to be honest. The brakes are working quite nicely there. Very busy scenario. There's so much going on. I love it. And if you think, if you see scenarios the West Coast Main Line in the same sort of area with these locos already been like released, these locos have been missing inside them scenarios, so now that's another loco. That, that your scenarios could defend, uh, effectively now be busier because there's another loco to inject into that scenario for that area. Unless the developers have used 86s in, in their place, who knows, but in my, my eyes there's another loco there to make it busier. Unfortunately, I've got no scenario timetables for this sort of era, but uh, I'm sure other people will look forward to it. Right, so just before we get shifting again, I'm just going to pause for a moment. Um, yeah, so a couple of little... Um, Small things from what I've noticed, so minor visual things really, nothing nothing harsh. Just a couple of little bits down here, like on the roof there, there's a, a smoothing thing, there's a little triangle there. There's one on the other side as well, a bit of a bit of a blemish on the roof there. Um I'm sure hopefully and same again there, it's just a bit jagged on the front, but whether these can be like, fixed easy or not, I don't know. Just things that I've spotted. Um another one is the uh, window um, handle on the outside has got yellow. Uh, in my opinion, that should be like a, a silvery thing. Really, really poor explanation there, but I'm sure you guys know what I mean. <laughs> um, yeah, same on both sides, but yeah, there should be like a silver sort of like pull thing to drop the window down. Um, but yeah, the detail overall, like the, the, the decals on the side there, um, they're clear and all that. Decent. Even got a 3D um, BR logo on the side. Look at this down here. That's brilliant. I don't know how much of this is all brand new or not yet. I haven't got through the manual whether the bogus and stuff have been reused elsewhere. I've got to go through all this yet, but the, the, the general detail in itself is very, very nice. 
I don't think that looks like an air. That, that's come from an 86 though. I don't feel like I've ever seen that sort of side on detail in an 86 or 7. So I, I think it's all fresh, everything from the ground up. Yeah, it's very nice, all the rivets on the side here and stuff like that. Um, it's cool, really cool. Uh, you've got the data panel down here, which is all crisp and clear again. Same with the numbers and stuff like that. It's all been done really, really well. To be fair, that to me does look like payware quality. Bar the little bit, I think, of the slope nose. But to be fair, it's a sole thing. I don't think it looks bad at all. I don't think it detracts anything from the nose. I think it looks like an 85 to me. I, I, I've i looked at that and I've seen pictures and it looks like an 85. There'll be people out there that they'll recall it here, there and everywhere. But for me, I'm happy with that. And we've got an 85 it, it, and it was free. I'd have gladly have paid um, some ching for that. Yeah, look at the top here again, just, uh, whilst we're stationary. It's a detail on that. There's a couple of little bits like the, uh, the texture don't quite line up as such, but for me, it looks perfectly fine. How often are you going to be going straight up to it looking at that? You're not. Pantograph detail's cool. Um, you've got a little... Like, let's see here, there's a little detail there. You've got a little wire that drops down there. So you've got that sort of detail as well. It's really nice. <clears throat> I have no idea what type of uh, pantograph that is. I'm not a pantograph connoisseur. <laughs> I'm sure someone will tell me. I'm not sure. Is it a, it's not stone. It's not stone fable, is it? I could be totally wrong there. I don't have a clue. Um... On that as such. I love this though, all these box on the top of electrical stuff. I've got to say the one cool thing is what I have actually noticed is there's no gaps in the model. Whereas sometimes in the payware community market, you do get gaps in your models. <laughs> Whereas this, up to now I have seen literally no holes whatsoever in the in the model itself. So yeah, very, very good indeed. A couple of little blemishes around the handrail and Around the lights there and such, but it's it's all good. It really is really really good. Decent textures in the uh, lights as well. Not sure what these are. Are these horn vents or something? Someone able to enlighten me what they are? I I, I have a feeling that they're to do with the horn. Maybe the horns are behind them grills. But uh, again, I'm not always sure. Yeah, it's really good. Honestly, guys, go and grab a copy of this for, for the for the cost of zero zero zero. Go and grab it, guys. Next stop, Stafford. We've got a, a 36 mile trip through to Stafford. Um, it's less, a little less than half an hour's drive. Let's see what the, uh, the scenario brings us. I will go through some of the manual with you though, which I have at hand somewhere. So, comes a nice little uh, handy detailed manual, 10 pages long. Um, <clears throat> 10 pages, I think it is. Yep, 10 pages long. Starts off with the uh, in the contents of order, brief history, package contents, features, requirements, and keyboard controls. Placing it in a scenario, included scenario, uh, infrequently asked questions, and credits and acknowledgments at the end. So going through the brief history, so the Class 85 electric locomotives were a pseudo prototypical class of locomotive that were part of an order by a British Rail or uh, for different development electrical locomotive classes to support the West Coast Mainland electrification scheme. 
and feed into the development of a large production order of the new locomotives for the West Coast Mainline, which did eventually become Class 86. Classes 81 to 85 were ordered from different manufacturers, with the 85s being built by British Rail's own works at Doncaster. Of all the pre-production classes of locomotives built for the West Coast Mainline electrification, the Class 85 was the most populous and most reliable and had the longest life of service. Much of the Class 85 design uh, specifications can be seen mirrored in the later Class 86 and 87 locomotives. The Class 85s, or also known as AL5s, were originally delivered with two pantographs, one for 25 kV AC and another for 6.25 kV AC supply in areas of limited structural clearance. They were also delivered with vacuum brakes only. From 1968 onwards, the 6.25 kV, uh, kV, I can't remember what that is, kilo, is it kilovolts? KV anyway, supply route was uh, abandoned and air brakes were fitted. With the brake cylinders taking uh, residence in the roof and the place previously occupied by the 6.25 kV pantograph. The class spent mo almost all of their lives on both passenger and freight workings on the West Coast Main Line. When rail freight was well, sexified in the mid 1980s, the overhead electrification of the West Coast, oh sorry, of the North London lines, principally for freight, was completed around the same time. The class could also be found covering a handful of freight duties on the Great Eastern Main Line and the LTS lines, such as car trains. Uh, traffic from the Ford factory in Dagenham and Speedlink freight from Ripple Lane. In 1989, to support the then new Class 90 fleet, which was experiencing delivery delays, 15 Class 85s had their electric train supply isolated and were re geared for 80 mile an hour top speed, being reclassified as 85 slash ones and used solely for freight services. The Class 85s were withdrawn in 1991. For the few final months, 85018 and 85101 were adorned with red buff beans and original numbers. 85101 was preserved by Pete Waterman in 1992 and its ownership passed to the AC Locomotive Group, who have been its custodians ever since. In 2003, the crew ETD and Doncaster Works Open Days 85101 was repainted in rail freight triple grade and also adorned with the train of petroleum stickers. It was named Doncaster Plant 150, 1853 to 2003. The locomotive now resides at Barrow Hill Roundhouse in the BR Blue livery with its BR Tops number, which is 85006 and restored. So I'm looking at that yellow line there, and I think I'm actually might be going over the low code limit. <laughs> I'm just going to go and double check the top, like the little data panel thing here. Uh, oh no, that speed is 100. Okay, right, we're going for it. All right. I thought it might be going a bit too much for these, but no, not the problem. Right, anyway, moving swiftly on from the brief introduction there about the low codes. Hopefully I didn't fluff that up too much. I'll try my best not to. Sometimes it does get a little bit flustered when you try to look at what you're doing and driving. Um, Content. So this pack contains Class 85 electric locomotives as they appeared in their later BR period with headlights in the head code box position and top numbers applied. So it comes with BR Blue Clean which is 85 slash zeros and 85 slash ones. You've also got a Blue Weathered 85 slash O and 85 slash one. BR Blue with Red Buffer Beam Clean 85018 and 101. BR Blue with red buffer being weathered again, same you uh, same local numbers, which is 85018 and 101. Also comes with Rail Freight Triple Grey 85101 with a trainload logo on the corridor side only, and also 101 with trainload logos on both sides. Those also have the name plates, uh, as mentioned in the introduction.
I have a feeling like these possibly actually may work with the um, neutral sections because it actually stopped taking power, so maybe they do work. I need to see if I can catch that. It's just that the line light doesn't go out, so maybe the line light doesn't work in the actual cab model itself. Not sure on that, but anyway, it, it's, take, it's taking power again now. Um, right, so to operate the Class 85, you need the following requirements, which are the West Coast Mainline North, which is available on Steam. Uh, that's all you need to actually run the loco. Um, there are requirements, of course, for the snow itself, but we'll go through them. Uh, the Class 85 currently uses the cab view and most of the sounds from the 86, so most of the sounds, fair enough, that answers one of my earlier questions of what I wasn't over sure of. Um, so, yeah, sounds from the 86, local might be included from West Coast Valley North, but with exceptions, it runs with uh, it runs on much of the same script controls as a class 86, but with no ex uh, but with exceptions. So there have been some sound modifications made to provide a motor fan sound more akin to the class 85. It's also uh, enabled the horn to be split into two, uh, so basically two tone control. Additional light controls not previously present with the 86 have also been supplied. The Class 85 slash 1 also has a lower maximum speed compared to the 85 slash 0 as per the real configuration. There is also a handy key for the controls there. I'm not going to go through them because uh, you can find that for yourself. Um, placing it in your own scenario, all you do is uh, look for backdated train sim on the scenario developer filter and then click the Class 85 in the list provided. Although it's not expected to be necessary, you can also tick Keith M. Ross's West Coast Mainline North in the scenarios um, filter thing as well, just in case there's any issues uh, with placing it down and operating it. I would probably just tick that anyway, as it's, uh, it is a requirement for the train anyway. Uh, section 5, um, which is the included scenario, so this is uh, the down semi fast Houston to crew. Comes with a suffix of um, 85 square brackets, so you can find that, and that's on West Coast Mainline Trent Valley route, um, which is what you're seeing now before you. So um, this is what you what you'll get. Uh, to run the scenario, you need the Class 86 pack from Steam, which is not the same one as North. So uh, there's that one, the 86 Enhancement pack from AP, the Class 87 Locomotive pack from AP, Mark One Coach pack Volume One from AP. Uh, the Mark II A to C coaching pack and also the Mark II D to F coach pack. The Mark III A to B also from AP there. You then need the FSAs and FTA wagons, which are the containers from AP, and then finally the IPA car carrier wagon pack, which comes with the Class 67 from Just Trains. So we're coming up to a neutral section. I want to see if it actually loses amps with all this, because I'm not really sure. Soon find out. Amps died, does work. Mm, no, it's kept its amped. So, yeah, new section, they must be just uh, somebody with the 86 maybe that's uh, using off that. Not to worry, we may see it in the future. It's not the end of the world. <coughs> I'm loving the mixture of liveries and locos. Fantastic. So busy. It's a joy to be in it, it's a joy to drive. Just knowing it's an 85. Getting any closer. <laughs> right, back to the manual. So, uh, topic number six, which is the infrequently asked questions. Question one Will there be a new cab view made for the Class 85? So, the answer for that is yes, eventually. A new cab view at this stage was excluded first, on the basis that it would have considerably extended the development time. At odds with the original intention to have something available to the public around Christmas of 2022. 
Secondly, the online photographic record for a Class 85 cab was so small that I didn't think I had enough reference uh, available to make the new cab. The Class 85 cab is similar in many parts to the Class 86 cab, which is substituting at this, uh, which is substituting, uh, which is substituting at this stage. Can't speak. Thirdly, um, it's not been able to visit 85006 in person at Barrow Hill yet, so feels uh, that not having enough knowledge of that cab layout and enough photographs and notes of my own to aid with the making of the cab when a visit has been made the chance of a cab being produced for the 85 will be considerably better so that's definitely that's not a no that is a yes at some point <laughs> so excellent stuff look forward to seeing that when the time does come and i hope that um, when that does come it'll uh, reflect the same quality as the exterior of the model does it's, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, next question on there. Will you produce any pre-topped versions of the 85 slash AL5s? Uh, answer on that one. For the time being, I have no plans to produce a further variant of the Class 85. Another developer was previously expressing interest in importing their AL5 model into the simulator, covering the early era of the class. And so I'd like to give them a chance to see their project through, which is totally fair play. I fully understand that if someone's doing um, an earlier version, then yeah, give them a chance uh, and see how that goes. They may come back in time and think that it's not happened. Let's do it. Who knows? For that, uh, for the moment being, is, uh, there's no plan, basically. Um, third question. Is it possible to apply any enhancements to the Class 85 that were featured in the AP Class 86 EP? So the answer, in theory, yes. However, this has not been done at the stage due to the complexity of Armstrong Powerhouse's scripts and the way they are set up to manipulate features specific to the 86 model. Forget the 85 function as so, and do not want to have to modify AP scripts to an extent that it violates their EULA. Totally fair. Don't want uh, people chasing me back. I understand that. Uh, many features from the Class 86 EP also rely on a cab view model with many more switches and controls available which is stated above has not been completed for the 85 at this stage Fair. Um, next question uh, which is the last question on the uh, not FAQ, IAQ um, is if I have an idea about a modification that can be done to the Class 85 to add some extra features would I be allowed to do it and make it public so the answer on that one is yes however as courtesy um, he would um, basically ask that whilst publishing you do the following things so one release as freeware the locomotive is freeware and so I do not think it's appropriate to make um, a further model to payware which is totally fair I, I wouldn't agree with that either I, I, I agree on that stance um, two do not package up and publish this mod in such a way that the original class 85 package has to be re-uploaded as part of that the class 85 pack as it is available at data tracing is to be made a prior requirement for any subsequent mods, totally fair. It's their um, their IP. It's their content uh, at the end of the day. Basically, just be sensible if you are going to mod things. Even, even just ask out of courtesy. Just ask if you're not sure. Ask them. I'm sure they'll help you out and do the damp that you need. And finally, credits and acknowledgements. So, 3D modeling, sounds, mods, and scripting uh, additions are backdated train sim. The scenario is also from backdated train sim. Testing uh, Bradley Milligan and Andy Freeman. And thanks go to the Lionside Video Productions for re releasing their modern Traction Archive DVD series online and making lots of great 85 footage available. Thanks also go to Brian Webb and John Duncan, authors of the AC Electric Locomotives of British Rail, for providing drawings and technical details relating to the Class 85 in their book. Enjoy! I am doing so. So there we go. So quite an in depth little manual there. Um, I hope you're not falling asleep listening to me talk you through that. Um, I just find relaying that information across to you is always a helpful uh, thing as well. Just, it makes you decide whether you think it's worth downloading or not. And it also helps me just sit, not sit here doing small talk and trying to find things to say when I can actually talk about in, important stuff. <laughs> Whilst you are sitting there enjoying the view and the sound. Something I actually would like to do is at some point go to Barry Hill. Um, we've built Barry Hill with just trains, but we've never actually been, well, I haven't anyway, Martin or Mark's been, but I've never been. 
I literally built it off just photos and videos. Um, but yeah, it's somewhere I would like to go at some point. I know, no, obviously they've got some of the early AC um, like AL locos there. It'd be nice to actually see them up close and personal. I don't run this route very often, but it's always a, it's always a joy to come back and have a play on it. Now that it runs like a dream on the uh, on the PC, this always run really really uh, sluggish. Uh, I think also actually approaching Rugeley um, and Valley. Could actually have another potential screen shot, depending on how the uh, the lighting looks. Maybe one with the power station in the background. We'll try it but from the station. The last time I came through, actually, was when I did um, the past 40 scenario for the uh, the VP, um, the who won three pack, I think it was. That pack was also done in um, with uh, John Astley as well at uh, SLS Slowline Simulations. They uh, worked together on that. We're coming up to the, the, uh, the final 10 miles of the journey now, so it'll, we'll soon be at Stafford. We've got literally about seven minutes worth of driving left, so the last little bit to do. It's been nice though, I've really enjoyed this. Um, I don't normally do a video on Christmas Day, the Boxing Day release video, but the um, video on Christmas Day is normally not really something I do because it's uh, usually hectic, but everyone was fast asleep quite early in a busy day, as, as Christmas Day is. It's a very overwhelming day. And, uh, Especially for the uh, for the kids, it's been a good one. So we're going up to the session. I'm going to fly down to the um, view that people take, which is this one. Try a couple of there, maybe both angles. Well, that's that first but no that's rubbish we've got this side another potential who knows well i'll do like the first one with the 285 medium I always remember with the old 86 though, that you could hear the wind in, in the cab. I can, I can hear that wind. It's not really annoying, it's just a little slight bit. I mean, you can't operate the window in this thing, I think, mate, you can't. That would obviously be a new cab thing, so if a new cab was to come, you'd obviously have to have them made the windows and all that sort of jazz. You're, you're limited what, with what you've got, unfortunately. Um, but, to be quite fair, this that cab doesn't look overly bad. A little bit low res on some stuff down there, like, but the age of it actually is pretty old. It's not bad at all. I don't know if the cab's been spruced up or not, but it looks good for its age if it is the original stuff, the original textures. A little bit of break on it now because we are going to be crossing over. We need to be down to 65. And I can ramp it up again just uh, for the last bit. The service has been held for us here. 
who has a higher priority over something. God knows what. What if that was the loco that um, actually might have been the train that left um, as we started the scenario, actually? It's just been stopped somewhere. Or we've uh, caught up. All of the section of the route, especially when you start going alongside the canal. The Shukla Tunnel comes up shortly. It truly has put a smile on my face driving this. Honestly. That was great in the tunnel, especially with the uh, tunnel reverb. I'd love to continue this onto crew, <laughs> but unfortunately we can't. I'm sort of just sat here just, to, just enjoying it. I never, um, obviously I was born in 1991, so these by the point that I was born, they were gone. So I never experienced things, but just being able to sit here and sort of uh, experience it a little bit in, in, in some way or form, it's really nice. Sometimes it makes you wish that you were born maybe 15, 20, uh, 20 years earlier. So you could experience all that sort of uh, goodness of what the railways were back in them days. What traction there was around. And there she is, Stafford is just appearing on the hood. Meaning it's almost journey's end for ourselves. And there is another 85. Working solo with quite a lengthy rate there, see, it just sort of shows how powerful one single loco is there. We've got an awful Kuju uh, flange grill. I hope that can go sometime. That's an awful noise. <laughs> That's the only bad thing about the sounds, I will say. I'm having to hear that. As we are uh, near Stafford, we need to be down to 25 uh, as we cross over. We're uh, going to be calling into platform 5 for this.
No, I've done it, but apparently it's not going to take power for some unknown reason. Oh, it's doing it now. Just have to keep it, uh, keep the momentum going into the station. Knock it into neutral is a bit of a pain. <laughs> Twice I've done that where I've either gone, couldn't get it into neutral or went straight into reverse there. But oh, that is absolutely superb. It really has put a smile on my face. Now I've actually enjoyed driving that. I look forward to future scenarios that'll come uh, in time. So I'll be keeping that for them because this will not be the last time you see this. It'll be on the stream uh, without a shadow of a doubt. So fair play and well played to backdated training sim there. And a massive thanks to yourself for uh, the time and effort that you put into this. Um, I look forward to hopefully the cab in the near future and uh, any little updates, maybe just some of the bits that, piece that I've pointed out, uh, if anything that can be done there, I really appreciate it but anyway, thank you again and also thank you to you guys at home for watching the video, hope you've enjoyed it don't forget, to like, share and subscribe, hit the notification bell for future videos from ourselves also and don't forget you can catch us on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash train sim underscore tv on a friday and sunday normally um however a little bit here and there around the christmas and new year period um but yeah keep your eye out uh we've got some uh we've got plenty of videos coming from uh as well we've, there's all sorts to do i still got a backlog of things that i want to do so keep your eye out i will be getting through them uh at some point but on that note i'm gonna leave it there thank you very much for watching go and grab a copy of it links in the description take care guys and see you again on the next one bye for now